In this video we're going to be showing you how we created this little mock-up here and this is a mock-up for a glitter heat press material um, and we're going to show you exactly all the steps that are involved. It's very very easy to do here inside CorelDRAW. So first of all let's just create an object. Now your object could be text, uh, could be anything. Um, so let's just go ahead and type in the word cheer. You know, you could use Molly or whatever you want to do as a mock-up to show your customer. And then we're going to go ahead and change our font. And I use the, just a real basic uh, brush script font. And then we could go ahead and make this uh, as big as we wanted or as small as we wanted, whatever the case uh, might be. But we'll just kind of leave it here for default. Now what I did is I went over to Google Images and I uh, Googled this glitter dash silver 2 and this is the image that I actually use um, for most of my mock-ups so when I want to do a heat press glitter material mock-up you know there's several ones here that you could actually use that would be uh, pretty decent but all I do is just drag and drop from Google right here into CorelDRAW and so there is my image now I uh, can make this much much smaller because um, obviously it's or I can make my text bigger either way you want to look at it so let's just maybe let's just say we want our text to be 8 inches let's hit our lock to scale proportionally so there we go there's our text at 8 inches and then um, we have our little uh, little piece here now we could do a couple of different things here um, we can make this bigger um, so for example I could just make um, a few duplicates and all I'm doing is just dragging them and you know just copying them across by making duplicates like so and you can see because of the pattern you don't really see um, you know the it, it tiles pretty easily um, because of the type of pattern that it is um, so you know you can make it as big as we need it to for our text you do see a little bit of repeating um, you know, if you zoom out a little bit, you can kind of see a little bit, but when you're zoomed in tight, you wouldn't see that. So if I go to my view and wireframe mode, you can see we have lots of duplicates right on top of one another, right? So what I would do is I would probably select everything, come back up here to bitmap, convert to bitmap, and go ahead and click OK. And that will make it all one block. So if we go back to wireframe mode, you can see it now is all one block. Um, again, you don't have to do it this way, but that's just one way to do it. And then to power clip inside, we just right click on our image, drag it over our chair text, and you see that, I don't know if you can see that little down arrow there, just right click right over that, and one of the options will be power clip inside. And that power clips it inside. So now, the next step is you can see it, it's not positioned exactly where we need to, so we'll right click on our text and choose the edit power clip function and that will allow us to place uh, our bitmap and we can make another bitmap you know make another copy of that bitmap to fill in all of our uh, cheer text here now once we have that we might go back to bitmap convert to bitmap again and again now we just have one bitmap instead of two now the other thing that you're probably going to want to do is represent various different colors of material. And we can do that right here inside the bitmap dropdown. Come to the image adjustment lab. Um, you might get this warning message. That's okay. We'll just go ahead and click OK. And here's where we can do our adjustments. Now this will take some getting used to. It, it still frustrates me to this day because it's it to me it acts so much different than what I'm used to in Photoshop. But one main control that you're probably going to want to start with is your brightness control. Usually I lower the brightness control, maybe increase the contrast control. You really have to play with these and familiarize yourself with what they do and don't do. Um, but for now, we can come into the tint. Um, and you can usually get a, a starting point of what tint you want. So we can do pinks. Um, you can come to the other spectrum. You can do greens and blues. Um, so, you know, you just have to kind of go back and forth. And then you can kind of adjust the brightness control to get the, the intensity. If we want a real bright pink, so you can come back in here uh, and go that route too. And again, you can increase the contrast. And you can get, you know, you, with you changing these values, you can get 
pretty much what you want to get. Um, and these highlights and shadows, you probably won't see a whole lot of fluctuation. Um, I don't typically use these a lot. It's mainly just brightness and contrast. Um, and uh, and then I adjust the saturation. You can see it's really bright. This is very, very noisy um, because of the, the difference of the extreme between the brightness and contrast. Um, so you can see it's a lot less noisy now. So. You know, those are all things that you can uh, adjust and get exactly what you want. And of course, like I said, the temperature controls. You can get your purples and blues, and you know, all your different all your different colors. You can go from one extreme to the other. Um, you know, adjusting various controls and getting exactly the type of material you want. So let's do a pink one. So we'll go back over here. We'll come back over here. Go back to kind of a pink one, and then we'll adjust this get this just where we want it uh, I think I like more contrast and then we'll really boost the saturation and then we'll just adjust this pink slider here yeah, maybe I like that right there so I'll go ahead and click OK and you can see I have a nice bright pink uh, material now and then you just right click on our bitmap to finish up finish editing this level and now you can see we have a nice uh, par clip text there. So what I'll do here is I'm just going to draw a box around this, fill it with black, shift page down, push it to the bottom, and you can see we have a start of a really nice uh, presentation for our simulated heat press material. Last thing to do maybe is to make a little glint, a um, little sparkle, and I've seen people talk about uh, on the forums I've seen people talk about going into Photoshop to do that and of course we don't need to do that it's an extra step um, that we certainly don't need to do so let me show you how you can make a little glint real easy here in CorelDRAW so here's how I would do it um, just just a little example use a couple different tools so we'll make a little sliver of a rectangle to start with <clears throat> and then we'll give it a fill color no outline, so we'll right click, get rid of the outline, and then I'm going to grab my shape edit tool. Now, because it's a rectangle, we can't edit it, so we have to convert to curves. So I'm going to hit Control Q. We could come up to the arrange and convert to curves that way too. And then I'm just going to double click to add a node, double click to add a node roughly center, double click to add a node roughly center, up top here, double click to add a node roughly center, and then just delete these two end nodes there and this one here and this one here so you get a kind of a shape like that okay and again you don't have to be real perfect and we can stretch this out something like that okay so then I click on it again and I get these rotation handles if I hold my control key down and then right click that makes a duplicate and then do it again right click to make a duplicate do it again right click and make a duplicate and you know we could keep going you know you could split split the difference there um, split the difference here you could put as many as you want. I don't want that many. I usually do this. And then usually the uh, middle ones here, I usually make just a little bit smaller. So my glint looks something like that. So I would select that whole glint and hit this button here to weld it together. Give it a white fill, typically. And then bitmap, convert to bitmap. Now, if I take that glint, that invisible glint, it's there, and I hover it over, now you can kind of see more what it looks like. And then, so what I would do is I would come in here, you know, make it small, decide how big you want your glint to be, something like that perhaps, and then come up here, this will really make it really nice, come up here to bitmap, come up here to blur, and Gaussian blur. Uh, and then I usually use a two pixel, Gaussian blur. We can hit preview to preview what it looks like if we want to bump it up. See, the more you use, you can see the, the, the softer it gets. So it's really a personal preference, what we like. Let's do 2.6, click OK. And then we have a nice little glint there. Very nice. And we just right click to make a few duplicates. And then we just have a nice little. Uh, preview there and if you look at it real tight at the glint you can see you know what and when you look at it real close you might say well 
let's make it a little bit softer glint. I actually think that would look a little bit better if it was softer. And see, yeah, I think that like actually does look a little bit better softer like that. But again, it's really just a matter of personal preference. Now, and I even have gone, sometimes when I do the <clears throat> simulated heat press material, I sometimes will even come up here, go to the image adjustment lab, um, and sometimes I will give it a color. So um, when we'll come down here, sometimes give that glint a color. Uh, let's see here. It's hard to it's hard to get white to go. Oh, well, let's see here. Let's there we go. So now we can. So when you pull that saturate, there we go. Um, but now our saturation's down to nothing here. There we go. So then we can give it a color. Um, and sometimes that's nice to give it uh, a similar color. You could even lower the opacity, you know, do some things um, like that as well. So, you know, it's just a matter of playing around with what you like and what you don't like. But usually I just do the, the white glints. I don't usually uh, make a colored glint, but those are some of the different options you have here inside CorelDRAW.